hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to School After Hours Podcast, where we talk about all things related to out-of-school time programming and education. I am your host, Jay Lee, and on this show, it's going to be real interesting. It's going to be me, myself, and I, but I'm in the space of planning for the school year. Yes, planning. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to go ahead and talk about my planning process as we get ready for the school year. Some of us may have already started, you know, because school has started in certain areas. But for those of us that have just a little bit more time, go ahead and come and plan with me. So let's go ahead and get our pens, papers, all the things that we need. Let's go ahead and sit down at the conversation table. So when I sit down and start to plan my year, I think about the annual goals. For each organization, there's specific goals that they want to accomplish for the school year. Some of these goals may be identified as uh, annual goals or KPIs, key performance indicators, and that's how you're going to measure the success within your year. Within that, there are specific buckets that you want to focus on. So for me, when I'm planning my year and having that conversation with my supervisor or um, if in trainings, those key performance indicators or annual goals will be discussed. So usually they're geared around these specific things. Student enrollment, how many students are enrolled in your program for the beginning and end of the year or for the beginning of the year and then each quarter or session that you may have. Another one is student attendance. How many kids are showing up within a day? You know, kids vote with their feet. If they like it, they're going to come back. If they don't, mm, you might not see them for a while. So how are kids showing up in your program? Another one is community engagement. How are you engaging the community and how are you collaborating with the community? In my mind, that falls under events. So what events are you having during the year that you're utilizing your human capital while also creating spaces for collaboration to do community functions? Another one is parent engagement. How are you engaging your parents during the school year? And that's another one that falls under events in my mind. Uh, Are you showing up for back to school night to let parents know that you're available and this is a program that they should or want to check out? Another one for parent engagement, become a part of your PTA That's the best way to get in touch with parents or find ways to engage with parents because PTA also plans certain events around the school year. And that's another way of collaborating within your community. Two birds on stone. And last but not least, student retention. How many students were you able to retain within your program throughout the year? Right. Um, Also, quarterly, that's going to play a role in this because the students that you have participating in your first quarter may or may not be the students that's going to participate in your second quarter. But how many students were you able to retain throughout each quarter till the end of the year? Right. So that's something to think about. It's usually based around those buckets. So once I know the goals for those things, I can go ahead and kind of plan around what I want my year to look like. So for community engagement, maybe the goal is having four functions for the year, right? Shouldn't be hard. You have Thanksgiving, you have Christmas, you have other holidays that come about um, within the school year. So being in tune with your community, but also with the school to see what they're doing so you can have an opportunity to collaborate if you can Right. Because the same way that you have goals to meet for community engagement, they also have goals to reach for community engagement and parent engagement as well. So why not come to the table and see if you can work out a plan? Go ahead and make that happen. So, yeah, once I know the goals for those key areas, then I can go ahead and plan what I want to do throughout the year. And what my percentage is for each specific thing is. So for student enrollment, maybe if the school that I'm serving or the schools that I'm serving, uh, maybe my goal or the annual goal or KPI is to have 30% of your student population in the school participate in programming. Great. How do I make that happen? And then start to make a plan for the action steps that you can do. Um, Some things, think about some things that you can do or some places that you can show up 
advertise your program, the benefits of being in your program. Go ahead and have your data available. So as parents and community members are walking by, maybe you can have a table set up at a function. As people come by and come by your table, you have things that they can look at. And also having a sign-up sheet to know and learn more information so you can do follow-ups. There you go. There's your community engagement right there and also gaining more interest. So once I have all those things in place, then I want to go ahead and create my schedule for the week. Dum, dum, dum. But before I go into that, let's go ahead and take a minute and take a break. Are you a program director or thinking of starting a program? Maybe you need new curriculum that focuses on character development or technical skills. Maybe you need help establishing effective program logistics to have an impactful program culture. Or, overall, you just need a program evaluation. Well, School After Hours Consulting is here to help. Contact us at schoolafterhours.com and our contact information is in the show notes. Hope to hear from you soon. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome, welcome. So in this conversation, we are talking about planning for the school year. This is for my educators, for all of my site directors and program providers. Go ahead and plan out the things that you want to accomplish for the year. So the last place I left off was creating your program schedule, right? So having an idea of how you want the flow of the day to go. Once students arrive to the time that they leave, what do you want the day to look like? In your mind, keep in mind there are some things that's going to be a must on your calendar or on your schedule. For example, snack. Snack, for most programs, is a must. Since kids are coming to you later on in the day, they may need something to snack on, and some programs do not end until about 6 o'clock. So it's usually a requirement to have snack for after-school time programming. So go ahead and figure out a place where you can go ahead and put snack. Um, Another thing that you may want to consider is your mandatory, your must-do activities. So for some programs, uh, physical activity is a must. And sometimes it's 20 to 30 minutes for every day or for a certain number of hours out of the week. Perfectly fine. So. Go ahead and figure out a spot where you want to have that physical activity um, to incorporate into your schedule for the week. So those are kind of like your non-negotiables for your schedule. Now, once you have your non-negotiables written down and kind of figured out what you must have, you get to get a picture of your wiggle room, the areas where you have time to incorporate extracurricular activity, like maybe a cooking class for a program provider, or even a crafts class, or even just having a free period where kids could go ahead and sit down, do board games for a certain amount of time, as well as have free play. Perfectly fine. So once you have your non-negotiables in your schedule, like I said, you get to look at some flexibility of where you can put other things. Now, one thing that I must stress, and I say I must stress, is please, please, please put in your transition times. What do I mean? I'm happy you asked. Let me go ahead and tell you. So your transition times are the time that is in between two activities. So that walk from one class to the next class, have a break in the middle of your activities. So for example, if your students are doing, uh, let's say, arts and crafts from 3 to 3.30, right? The next activity is going to be um, outside sports. Perfectly fine. So your uh, outside sports should not start at 3.30. Why? Because arts and crafts ends at 3 30. There was no time for you to transition from one activity to the next. That's what I mean by transition time. It is very, very important because as instructors are doing their activities, they need to keep in mind a time when they can stop, but also transition the kids to the next thing. 
Okay. So it gives them an opportunity to give children a warning, clean up spaces, all those things. So once class is over, they have a good portion of transition time to get to the next area and the next activity. Okay. Usually for transition times, I keep like a five minute transition time. So if arts and crafts ends at 325, the next activity, which would be sports outdoors would be at 3 30 okay so that would be the starting time they got five minutes five to get to where they gotta go so hopefully at that time the instructor i usually have instructors give their kids a five minute warning before they have to clean everything up in transition so it kind of gets kids into the routine of cleaning up, straighten up spaces, go ahead and lining up and then transitioning together so that they could be on so they can be to their next location on time. Okay. Please, please, please include your transition time. Okay. During your schedule. And then it, it gives you an accurate picture of um the time that you have left in a classroom or for an activity in my mind. Okay. Last but not least, once you have your flow of the week or flow of the day scheduled together, you will go ahead and start planning those activities, those group activities. Now, I am a supporter of doing less work instead of more work. If you are returning to this position and you are returning to this site and you kept your activities from last year, go ahead and go through those papers. Go ahead and go through those lessons. See what you can recycle. And go ahead and use those one more time. <laughs> do not make it harder on yourself if you do not have to. You, every year does not have to always be something completely different. Adding some new things in to spice it up and to make it a little bit more fun and engaging, sure, no problem. But everything, every little thing does not have to be a new activity, okay? Make it a little less work for yourself instead of making more work for yourself. Recycle the things that worked. Go ahead and add them into specific spaces or specific weeks that you want to have them. If you want to do a theme, go ahead and find the activities that follow with that theme. So that's something that you're going to do for that week. Okay. And for me, themes were great because it gave me an opportunity to reinforce a specific characteristic. So let's say I was following a social emotional learning curriculum and we were working on self self-awareness. For that month, I would have activities for each week that reinforce certain aspects of self-awareness and then do a follow-up at the end of each week. So I know that the kids took to it, but also give them an opportunity to apply it at the same time. So that's one of the things that I do, and that's how theming your months or your weeks um, can work. Everybody's different. You got to do what works for you and what you're able to maintain. So think about um, theming in that sense, but also reusing your lessons from the previous year and your activities from the previous year. And then it gives you a chance to see where you can add curriculum if you're doing curriculum for the year. And I know curriculums are non-negotiable. If you got it, that's what you must do. But see where you can incorporate that in your planning for your activities and within your schedule. So I usually do not plan a whole year out. Some people are great. They are superstars and they have that capability. I do not. <laughs> That's not who I am as a person. So what I like to do, especially starting out within a school year, I like to at least plan the first month because there are some things that you're going to figure out in your first month. You're learning your kids, you're learning your staff, you're learning people's strengths, you're learning areas of improvement, all of those things within your first month. So. Within the first month, I like to do the first week is get to know you activities. So we're doing two truths and a lie. We're doing human bingo. We're doing, um, um, I, I like that too, a number of get to know you games. So kids could begin to build a rapport, but also learn a little bit more about each other. Second week, I usually do team building activities. That gives me an opportunity to go ahead and reinforce and build culture. And also go over the expectations that I introduced in the first week. 
first week, introduce your expectations, rules, what you're expecting from them, but also what they can expect from you. Go ahead and do that. That's very, very important. Foundational work is very important. Go ahead and let them know that in the beginning. Have it posted everywhere as a reminder and make sure that you are going over it until they know it like their first, middle, and last name. <laughs> so usually that's when the second week I'm reinforcing the expectations, but also going over procedures that were introduced to them, processes, all those things, as well as incorporating team building activities for them so that they, they can learn each other um, and being reliable and being accountable. Um, but also learning about themselves at the same time. And within the third and fourth week, that's when I go ahead and put introduce curriculum and those type of activities to the students. So in that time, I figured out like what staff is able to do, what I may need to coach them on. I understand like the group of children that I have, what they gravitate to. So I can incorporate that into future planning because that's important but also to get a feel of how the culture of the program is being shaped. Is it going in the right direction? Are there some things that I need to reevaluate? Is there something that I need to fix? Is there something that is being done well that I want to highlight and continue to keep on doing? All these wonderful things, and it's a time of self-examination, but also reflection. It's a good opportunity to talk these things out with your team. Because with your team, they have direct access to the children so they can give you more insight that you may not always be able to get as a director because you're running around doing the things, doing the things. So have these conversations with your teams and it's good to have it during your planning time or your meeting time with them. And when you're also, sidebar, when you're also doing your planning for your calendar, make sure that you have planned times to meet and check in with your staff. That's very important too. As you're checking in with them, see how they're physically doing. If there's anything they want to talk through or anything that they need help with as far as strategy is concerned, or even character development is concerned. Sometimes in having those one-on-one -on -one conversations, you're able to find out a little bit more about the individual, but also see, you know, what they may need help in, having those individual and personal check-ins. And that could be something simple as at the end of the night, you all are sharing your highs and your lows. That's one thing that I used to do with my staff at the end of the night. What went well, what didn't go well, what we need to work on. So you kind of have a chance to get ahead of whatever the issue or whatever the problem may be and begin to work on it and create action steps to go ahead and address whatever that thing may be. So use them as your sounding board. Yeah, our team. Work together. But like I said, it also gives you an opportunity to learn a little bit more about them at the same time, as well as them learn about you and feel supported. Well, everyone. That is how I start my process of planning the year. But you know, there are multiple ways to do this planning process. So I'm interested to know, how do you plan for your year? Go ahead and leave me a comment. What are some of the things that you focus on in the beginning of the year? Or what are some of the strategies that you use to plan your school year and what you want your quarter or your annual year to look like? I would love to know. Well, everyone, that brings us to the end of our show. If you liked what you heard and you enjoyed our conversation, make sure that you're following us on YouTube, but also hit that like button so we know what you are enjoying. You can also find us on other podcast platforms like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts if you want to listen to our audio version as well. To get more behind the scenes stuff, make sure that you're following us on our social media accounts, Instagram and Facebook at School After Hours. Well, that's all I have for today. In the words of Mr. Arthur Ashe, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. Until next time, y'all. Bye-bye.